Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. I've been promising you some more portableism related topics here on the channel for quite some time, but things have got a little bit more urgent for me in recent weeks. The reason is that at the time of making this video, next weekend on the 6th of October is the Beat Geek event in London here in the UK. It's a big all day free event for DJs happening underneath the arches at Waterloo Station in London. There's loads going on, including our DJ City UK link up for this year. But another big factor is the Portablist Lounge Battle. Now this is a battle where DJs will fly in from the UK, Europe, all over the world to come and do battle with each other on portable turntables. Now of course regular viewers will know I won't be battling, that's not in my skill set, I don't have the skills for that, but I will be hanging out with Portablist all day, jamming and so on, and so I thought it's time to get some fresh, hot new Portablist kit and check it out. So I hit up Jesse Dean Designs, I hit up Autophon, Portablism Gear, DJ Woody and the guys from Infinity Faders. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get to it. There are lots of people in the portable modding game nowadays, but Jesse Dean is one of the OGs. From external faders to tone arms to complete restructuring of the PTO-1, his company is always pushing the limits of what can be achieved, designing and manufacturing everything in Southern California. On this PTO-1 scratch, we have his two latest products, the JDD X2 RSA fader and the JDD PTA-PCB tone arm. He does need to work on his product naming, I must say. The fader is an evolution of the JDD X2 RS, which I still have in my other PTO-1 scratch. On the outside, it looks pretty similar, but the guts are completely new. The 2 RSA is a contactless fader, which has a magnetic sensor system, which means low maintenance and very long life. Like the older model, it has 36mm dual rails, which means it's very straightforward to fit inside the PTO-1, and there is no soldering required. You'll still need to remove a capacitor from the Newmark boards for best performance, but that's not a tricky job. The 2RSA features cut-in adjustment from 0 to 8mm. That's done with small screws accessible from the faceplate. You can dial it in super short or a bit longer, entirely to your own taste. Another advantage of this feature is that it allows you to shut off the cut entirely on either side. Some people love having the fader cut on both sides, which the older one did, but it wasn't for everyone, and now it's up to you whether to have that feature or not. Performance-wise, it's absolutely on point. Really sharp cut with no appreciable slope, and it has a lighter, smoother feel than the previous model. The cooler caps fader knob supplied as standard always feels good too. It's priced around about $90 in the US, which is a very reasonable price for what you're getting. It's a big improvement over the already excellent older model for not much more money. Moving on, we have Jesse's latest tone arm for the PTO-1, the JDD PTA PCB. Until I killed my original PTO-1 USB, thanks to some amateur soldering mistakes, I was rocking the first Jesse Dean arm on there, the carbon fiber JDD PTA. It was very lovely indeed, but it had one major drawback, the price. Starting at $129, it cost the same as a PTO-1 Scratch did in the first place, so you were doubling the price of the turntable before you'd even upgraded the fader. The new PCB version is much more affordable, at around $69, but still offers a substantial upgrade over the stock PTO-1 arm. It's constructed from FR4 PCB fiberboard, hence the name, which has great physical properties, but also is a PCB board. So, rather than having cables running along the arm, the head shell wires are soldered in at the far end, and the signal travels through the arm itself. Really ingenious stuff. That also allows a further electrical connection going the other way to power a small LED which illuminates the stylus. This is a feature I absolutely love as it both looks cool and is useful. The gimbal at the end of the arm is made of ABS and there is a brass counterweight which can be moved back and forth to adjust stylus pressure without any fuss. It's worth noting there is no restriction on the movement of the arm, so you can move it across to the other side of the record which should be a lot more comfortable for those who use their right hand on the vinyl for scratching. The kit comes with a magnetic adapter for the tone arm clip, which connects to a magnet in the arm. I had doubts about this at first, as it seemed a little bit loose for my liking, but as you can see, it holds in place very well indeed. The PCB arm comes in a kit with a preamp, which you'll need for a regular magnetic cartridge, as the standard PTO-1 cart doesn't require one, and the whole kit can be installed with no soldering, ideal for clumsy people like myself. It's designed to work with Autophon OM style carts, but I did try it with an M44-7 as well, and that worked fine. 
Overall performance was just superb. From sound quality to tracking, everything is as good as I'd hoped it would be, and a vast improvement over the stock arm. Whilst I'm sure there will always be some buyers who will prefer to spend the extra and go for that baller carbon arm, I'd personally be perfectly happy with the PCB version on any PTO one I own in future. I've got nothing bad to say about it at all. Speaking of tracking, I noticed recently that Autophon have re-released their formerly pink OM scratch carts in a new white and blue colour scheme. I'll be doing a full review on those very soon, but I managed to borrow one in time for this test and found that combined with the Jesse Dean arm and the Infinity Platter, it tracked incredibly well on the PTO one at 3.5 grams, even without a break-in period. This is a non-skipless large hole 45 and, well, you can see how well it holds the groove. I'm excited to spend more time with these for sure. Moving on, this PTO one scratch is is also outfitted with the new Infinity Platter from the team behind Infinity Faders who make fader upgrades for Rain and Pioneer DJ mixers which I've reviewed in the past and still use to this day. In some respects the Infinity Platter is not a million miles away from the Solid Cuts Platter which I reviewed last year. Both offer aluminium construction with a far more sturdy feel than the plastic Newmark part. The Infinity Platter is a little bit heavier and seems to have been made to slightly higher tolerances. The Solid Cuts Platter reduces side to side wobble to a minimum but the Infinity one pretty much eliminates it altogether. There's a lip around the inside ring to remove the potential for the belt to ever slip off there, and the holes in the top allow for easy mounting of the belt onto the motor when you put the platter in place. The finish is very high quality all round, with a really smooth texture which makes for a slick scratching experience. Priced at around $100 in the US, with Infinity's usual lifetime warranty, the platter is an excellent upgrade for your PTO1. After the fader and tone arm, it's the thing which will have most impact on cutting performance, and being US made, the Infinity platter won't be subject to import duty or anything like that for American customers. Fully recommended. Next up we have perhaps the most pointless upgrade I've ever done to a portable, but also the most fun. It's the UFO backlight for solid cut platters from Portabilism Gear. Portabilism Gear is a store based in Germany who sell not only kit from companies like Jesse Dean Designs, but they also make a bunch of their own products, many of which are small, problem-solving items which can come in really handy for modders, like these adapters to fit various buttons into the fader hole on a PTO1 scratch. They also do a range of 7-inch slip mats, aluminium knob sets, things like that. But their UFO backlight kit really caught my eye. It's designed to work with solid cuts platters, as they have enough room underneath to fit it. It won't work with the stock or infinity platters. It's a ring of 60 RGB LEDs, which can be set to run in a variety of patterns or set to solid colours with the included RF remote. Fitting is solder free, but still moderately tricky as you have to run the cables around the motor in quite a fiddly fashion. The intention of portabilism gear is that you power it with a USB power bank located in the battery compartment of the PTO1, and then you use a 5 volt to 12 volt booster to power the turntable off the same power bank. My old PTO1 scratch was already stuffed to the gills with mods, so I fitted it in kind of a half-assed way, but you can still see the effect perfectly well. Cameras never really do justice to LEDs, it does look absolutely fantastic in the flesh. Of course, adding a slip mat will dull the effect, and a record even more so, it's then reduced to being a ring around the outside, but that still looks dope. At 30 euros, it's not an expensive mod, particularly if you're in Europe. Yes, it is utterly pointless, but I do kind of love it. Finally, a quick nod to British turntablist DJ Woody. He's a bit of a mad scientist, coming up with slightly bonkers ideas on a regular basis, and one of those is the grind strip. I've tried one on a full-size turntable, and I just couldn't nail it. I scratch with my left hand on the record, and I just don't have enough record control to make it do what it's supposed to do. But on a portable with my right hand, I finally got it down. The knobs make for this really cool tremolo effect. It's certainly not a mod for beginners. You need some very serious record control. But it's super cheap, and I think a DJ with proper skills could make some really interesting sounds with it indeed. So there you go, a good look at a bunch of portableist related kit. Loads of new exciting stuff going on all the time in this scene. That's why I love it so much. The scene never ceases to amaze me. It's never going to be massively mainstream. It's always going to be a niche of DJing, but what a niche. You know, so much going on, so much thought going into these products, so much thought going into ways of really beefing up and making these PTO and scratch turntables something very special indeed i just love it i will be at beat geek on the 6th of october so if you're in the uk you can make it to london i will see you there either way though thank you for watching today do make sure you subscribe for all our future tips tricks and product reviews i'll see you soon